Hello everyone, Pictos is here and welcome to the survival hunter guide for Dragonflight. So in this guide we're going to talk about stats, talents, legendaries and all that good stuff. But before we do that, everyone a very happy new year. I hope you made it through new year and you still have all your fingers. If you do not have all your fingers, Beast Mastery might be the spec for you. So somewhere on the screen you will probably be, be able to click the Beast Mastery Hunter guide or the Marksman Hunter guide I made earlier. Now, if this is something that you like, then consider leaving a like and subscribe to my channel. It helps me out a ton. And let's get into the video. Now let's talk about our stats. So agility is the most important stat that you can get. And this is founded on every item piece except for your neck and your rings. And so you want to go with the highest item level first. After that, you will want to go for the best secondary stat. Now, the best secondary stat, that depends on either single target or AOE. So for single target, it goes as follows. You want to go with haste, then crit, then mastery, and lastly, versatility. The last two, they swap around for AOE. So it's still haste, still crit, but then it's verse and mastery for AOE. Now, now you want to actually survive as a survival hunter because for some reason you decided after playing BM and uh, Marksman, you decided let's go and play survival hunter. And you find out that standing in melee happens that you die a lot and that's not so cool. So you want this total garbage build which actually helps you survive. Then if you want to go with that, then you will want to go with versatility first, then mastery then haste and then crit. And why is that? Because I do not want to join your guild, but thank you very much. You will want to go with versatility because it will increase your damage, but it also will decrease the damage that you take, making it, if you are learning to play in melee, uh, you will get hit more often by certain mechanics uh, and this will help you uh, survive just that little bit more. Mastery, it will increase the damage from your pet's focus spending abilities, sorry. Um, that's okay, but while your pet is active, you both regenerate your health as well. And so having a lot of mastery and a lot of versatility will help you survive a lot more in your keys. This is of course not a viable build damage wise, but if you are learning and you manage to have a lot of verse mastery gear on you because you played a lot of ranged before, then well, you can consider it making your dungeon runs just a little bit easier and you are able to, you know, um, live a little longer, play it a little better, learn it a little better. So yeah, you can do with that whatever you want. Now let's go to the talents. So now let's talk about our talents. So these talents are based on Mythic Plus because that is what I play with my Survival Hunter. I do not play either any other content except for maybe some world content as Survival. So it's based around Mythic Plus. The first off, you will take Kill Shot and you will take Improved Kill Shot because they are damage output uh, increasing abilities and so you want that. You will take post haste because disengage will freeze you from movement impairing effects. And uh, for example, in Azure Vault where you get rooted and then the AOE comes down, then you can free yourself with disengage and uh, that makes it just easier to dodge damage and be quicker as well. You will always take muzzle because you will learn to interrupt spells. Please, please very much, please just interrupt. Now you will take natural mending uh, for the increased uh, cooldown reduction on exhilaration, more self-healing, survival of the fittest to have uh, a better damage reduction. Um, tar trap is not mandatory. I would not take misdirect on survival hunter because I think the burst is not that great. It's good, but it's especially not as great as the damage from uh, marksman where misdirect is necessary and especially on the latest patch tanks got more threat as well so unless you are playing often with a tank that you know can't handle your burst then i wouldn't take this uh, take tar trap to help the tank kite tranquilizing shot very important on certain weeks and certain dungeons especially on enraging week on enraging week it's uh, especially good with improved tranquilizing shot because you will gain a lot of focus back because there's always something to uh, tranquilize but 
in every dungeon there is a mob which has a stacking buff or like a shield that you can remove with trank shot uh, learn yourself to use this combined with uh, your interrupt and that will make your mythic plus runs a lot easier we will take intimidation uh, to stun the targets and for example this week it's sanguine week so you might want to take a high explosive track to knock the mobs out of sanguine if your tank is not quickly in the same note you can also take scatter shot in instead of binding shot this week if you want to uh, tr um, you don't want to trap mobs in sanguine so you don't want to binding shot but you want might want to kick extra with scatter shot otherwise always go with binding shot because it's amazing to help your tank kite now we go further down um, i prefer nature's endurance just to have my survival of the fittest a up a little bit more or not not this one sorry it's wrong this one i like this one i like it up more often than it being stronger now let's see uh, camouflage is purely optional if you are not doing any dungeon skips then why take it maybe a point in pathfinding to increase your movement speed the same goes for improved uh, tranquilizing shot if you are not um, tranking a lot of mobs then you might want to go for pathfinding now we go further down the tree and here I maybe differ than some other people that are making videos on Survival Hunter because there are some things that I just like playstyle wise that I prefer. Um, so you can take Stampede instead of Dead Chakram. I think damage wise they're about the same. May maybe Dead Chakram is a little bit better, but uh, Stampede uh, synergizes very well with your. Uh, coordinated assault and you will have a bigger burst in a two minute window so that is something that you might want to go for now you will take explode uh, explosive shot because it is very 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 powerful uh, it deals a lot of damage and uh, especially if you have a ring from the raid which if you deal fire damage to mobs uh, then it will deal extra damage explosive shot will provide that fire damage for you so you can do that now uh, you will have to take arctic bola for that and that is a little bit sad because arctic bola just does not do a lot, of, uh, a lot of damage now we take serpent sting we are used that of course we are used to it uh, before so we are taking serpent sting and here i differ mostly is for the best amount of dps you will want to go for poison injection because uh, it will deal the most damage I personally prefer to go for Hydra's Bite, where Serpent Sting fires arrows at two additional enemies near your target and its damage over time is increased by 20%. I just like to run into a pool, cost two times the Serpent Sting, which in turn will uh, dot up about six mobs, five, six mobs, and uh, just have that running over. And you will see why I want to or prefer to do that in my rotation section. But I see, if I look up guides, I see it's going for poison injection. This is the best damage option. I prefer Hydra Spite. Uh, so that is the hunter side of the tree. Now let's go to the survival hunter side of the tree. So you will go, of course, for Raptor Strike. Then you will take Tip of the Spear. Your kill command increases the damage of your next Mongoose Bite by 25%. And that stacks up to three times. Then you will take Harpoon. And for the most dps output you want to go for turn safe engagement which will deal uh, damage when you harpoon an enemy i do not like the playstyle. i don't like backpedaling and using my harpoon to get back in or backpedaling uh, disengaging and and harpoon back in it is the best damage option i do not like the playstyle, and so i'm not using it the damage is it's it's a little bit of uh, a little bit of an increase but not all that much i like to go with aspect of the eagle uh, increase the range of your raptor strike and mongoose bite for example when you go to the no good, no good offensive and you are on second boss and you need to dodge all the swirlies and stuff like that i like to use this and just start wailing away from a distance uh, that helps you deal damage while even uh, when you can't get close or Maybe you're in a plus 10 and you need to run to a, a DPS because you have the thundering FX on you and otherwise you get stunned. You can pop this and run to the other person, uh, dispel your debuff and still damage at the same time. 
that is of course if they don't run to you which they should you're in melee but anyhow that's what you can do and that's what i prefer now we take wildfire bomb because this is a big part of our damage kit we will take ferocity all damage done by your pet is increased by 10 percent and we will take Bloodseeker. Your kill command causes the target to bleed for a certain amount and you will gain attack speed. And this is very powerful in combination with your red bomb. And I will talk about the bombs and how the rotation works later on in the rotation section. But this one is very good. Now Butchery is amazing. We are very happy that we have it back. And so we are taking Butchery. Besides Butchery, Lunge. Increase the range of your melee attacks and abilities by 3 yards. Again, just like with Aspect of the Eagle, this will give you just that little bit more leeway on uh, how you can, when you can hit stuff. Just, it's a little bit easier. I like that. If you, you don't have to take this one, you can put it somewhere else and I'll talk about where you can put it. But um, I like this talent and so I'm taking this one. Butchery. Um, this is also a damage increase, by the way, because your butch butchery range will get bigger, and especially with big groups of AoE. If you don't position yourself perfectly, this will give you just that little bit more room to actually AoE DPS everything down. Now we take Gorilla Tactics, and this is important. Your Wildfire Bomb now has two charges, and the initial explosion deals 50% increased damage. It's not the same as in Shadowlands, where you just bomb away and you don't think about it. But still having two bombs and so it can cool down and you have one ready is just very nice. We take Flanking Strike uh, because it is just an overpowered kill command and you will get a lot of focus and it deals quite a lot of physical damage. We will take Frenzy Strike. Butchery and Carve reduce the remaining cooldown on Wildfire Bomb by one second. And the remaining cooldown of Flanking Strike by one second for each target hit up to five. This will reduce the cooldown so immensely of both flanking strike and your bombs that it is amazing it is a must-have talent now we go further down the line we take raptor strike Mong uh, we take sweeping spear sorry raptor strike mongoose bite butchery and carve damage increased by 10 percent who doesn't want to deal more damage now we have sharp edges here in critical damage dealt by four percent this is very nice these points you can take out to put somewhere else as well. These are not mandatory points. You can swap them around uh, if you want to. It's just a little bit of more crit. Now we take, uh, no, we took that one. Improve Wildfire Bomb. Wildfire Bomb deals more damage. Very nice. We take um, uh, Intense Focus. Kill Command generates additional focus. We take Viper's Venom. And this is important. Now, Viper's Venom, your Raptor Strike or in this case mongoose bite because it replaces it your raptor strike uh, and mongoose bite have a 30 percent chance to apply a serpent sting to your target now what does what what does this mean if you are playing with poison injection then you will want to use your raptor strike to apply the serpent stings and then when the when poison injection hits about eight stacks then you will want to raptor strike that target to deal the most amount of damage because i'm playing hydra's bite there uh, you already have a lot of dots dots running on the target and you can use your raptor strike to either refresh the dots or you can use your raptor strike or mongoose bite in this case you can use that to uh, just dot the target that not are not hit by your hydra's bite wildfire infusion Getting a lot of different bombs makes everyone very nervous. You're still going to take it because it's amazing. And I'm going to talk about how the bombs work, so you'll be good. We go like this. We will take Coordinated Assault because Coordinated Assault is awesome. And you will. it, it, is, it has changed, but uh, you and your pet charge your enemy. This is important. You charge your enemy. Don't be the idiot like me that you use your co coordinated assault because you want to deal more damage. But you accidentally charge into an AoE and then die. And then you will lie there on the ground weeping because you charged in with your ability and you forgot that you would charge. Anyhow, be mindful of that. Uh, striking them for a combined well, certain physical uh, damage and 
and causing your bet, uh, pet's basic attack to empower your next spell cost. Your wildfire bomb increases the initial damage by 20%, that's nice. And your kill shield bleeds the target for 50% of the kill shield's damage over 6 seconds. And this is very nice, your kill start is becoming very strong. It is the Venter Covenant ability that you're actually going to use. And you will want to use that with Coordinated Assault. While Coordinated Assault is active, the cooldown of Wildfire Bomb is reduced by 50%. And Wildfire Bomb generates 10 focus when thrown. Kill Shield cooldown is reduced by 50%. And Kill Shield can be used against any target regardless of their current health. So you will want to spam your Kill Shots in this window. And that is very good. Now, you will take Ranger, Kill Shot, Serpent Sting, Arcane Shot, and Steady Shot, and Explosive Shot. Explosive, that's why you take it here. The damage is increased by, I think it's 40%. And 40% is a lot, especially in AoE when your Explosive Shot pops. It's very good. It deals a lot of damage. And lastly, we will take Birds of Prey. Uh, when you use Coordinated Assault, now your Kill Shield strikes up to three additional targets while Coordinated Assault is active, and they will all get the Kill Shield Bleed. So, that's nice. Now, for single target, you will not take these, these talents, you will not take uh, Coordinated Assault, you will not take Coordinated Kill, and you will not take Birds of Prey. You will take one point in quick shot, so you will still be able to get to Ranger. And you will go for Killer Companion, Spearhead, and Deadly Duo. And that is the change that you want to make on a um, single target. So that is the talent. So now let's talk about a rotation. One of you guys on my other videos told me that I should explain a little bit more in depth on why you are using certain abilities in what order and how to squeeze out the maximum amount of the DPS. And I think he made a very good point. And so I'm going to try and do that. And what I will try to do is make a list on screen where you can see what order I would press buttons and how this would work. But be well, let's just dive in. First off, try to not overcap on focus. Don't use your kill command or flanking strike when you are at 100 focus. Next one. Use your death chakram, your coordinated assault only when you can get the maximum duration out of it, or at least a lot of it. So for coordinated assault, it's 20 seconds. For death chakram, it's 10 seconds. If you are using it while well, you only have like maybe three, four seconds and then it will like disappear because the pool is dead, then that is a waste of the cooldown. So don't do that. Other than that, use it on cooldown. Same goes for explosive shot and same goes for flanking strike. Use those on cooldowns. For butchery, which has three stacks and for a wildfire bomb, which will have two stacks, use your uh, stack so there's always one rolling. There's always one on cooldown. That is very important. Next up, let's talk about our bombs. Because the bombs will have different implications because you are using wildfire infusion. And if you are not using wildfire infusion, then you are wrong. Just kidding, but please do. Now, how does these three bombs work? Shrapnel bomb, that is the blue bomb. Shrapnel pieces the targets causing mongoose bite and butchery to apply a bleed for nine seconds. That stacks up to three times. Easy as that. So to squeeze out a lot of DPS, you will want to pull your butchery, so not use your butchery. When you see blue bomb is coming up, then hold one, two, maybe even three stacks of butchery, throw your blue bomb, and instantly use your three butchery stacks. That way you will, of course, get a new bomb up, because you will reduce the cooldown by 15 seconds, depending on if you are hitting five targets, of course. But secondly, you will have the enemy all the enemies will have three stacks of the bleed dealing a lot of damage. So that is the blue bomb and how you will gain the most damage out of it. For red bomb, pheromone bomb, your kill command has a 100% chance to reset against targets coated with pheromones. So to get the most out of kill command uh, or the red bomb, you don't want to use the red bomb when you're at 100 focus because kill command will give you focus. So try to think of the red bomb as something that you will use on low focus 
And when you use your kill command and it will reset, you will swap to different targets and kill command them. Because that way, your Bloodseeker, your kill command causes the target to bleed for an additional uh, amount of damage. And you will gain attack speed for 10%, stacking up for every target hit. Um, so, you will, to squeeze the most out of it, use your Red Bomb and then kill command different targets. Now lastly, we'll talk about the Green Bomb. Your Green Bomb reacts violently with poison, causing an extra certain amount of fire damage against enemies suffering from Serpent Sting, and applies Serpent Sting to up to three targets. So, if you are using Hydra's Bite, like me, then you will easily have Serpent Stings up on different targets. Otherwise, if you are using Poison Injection, then you will wa want to make sure that you Raptor Strike and Mongoose Bite different targets, or Mongoose Bite in our case, because we uh, Raptor Strike is getting replaced. Uh, you want to make sure that you Mongoose Bite different targets, so they already have a Serpent Sting on them, and then you will throw the Green Bomb. So that's how, much, how you want to do that one. Now let's see uh, if I talked about everything. No, lastly, let's talk about our Mongoose Bite and how the Mongoose Fury window works. The Mongoose Fury window is, uh, it increases the damage of your Mongoose Bite by 15% for 14 seconds, stacking up to five times and successful attacks do not increase the duration. So when you hit your first Mongoose Bite, that's when your Mongoose Fury window starts. And in those 14 seconds, on single target, you will want to pump out as many Mongoose Bites as you can. On AoE, this will cost a lot of focus. And you will need your focus, for example, your Butchery. So, you don't want that. So, in single target, you will want to use as many Mongoose Bites as you can in those 14 seconds. When Mongoose Fury window almost is done, so when you have like 3 seconds left, you will want to stop gaining focus and you will just want to dump everything. Because if you are at five stacks and you can dump in maybe two more Mongoose Bites, they will hit like a truck. And especially with your four set, that will be amazing. So on single target, be very mindful of when you start your Mongoose Fury window. Start it with at least 70 focus. Best would be like 90. So that way you can instantly start and get to up to three stacks by if you have 90 focus you will instantly get three stacks by hitting mongoose by three times and then you will can start to gain maybe you will have a rat bomb you will uh, get your kill command running get a lot of uh, uh, focus back so you can mongoose bite again to get a lot of increased mongoose bite damage so that's how this works now let's show the rotation Now let's do the rotation slowly so you, you guys can follow it up. Uh, you can see the rotation on the left side of the screen and I'm going to talk over it. Sometimes I will let stuff drop off, of course, because I'm talking and explaining, but you will guys get the sense of the, uh, of the rotation. Now there are things I do differently. I first of all do not use terms of engagement and I'm not using uh, poison injection and I, that way I do not have to manage that. But what I do, what I like to do, if I have misdirect, I will misdirect the tank. And after that, I will use my Hydra's Bite while going into the pool. I will Hydra's Bite two mobs. That way I have everything pulled in. I will use my bomb to gap close, or my harpoon to gap close, and I will use my first bomb. Now what I do, I want to use my dead chakram because everything is taking now 10% uh, increased damage. I will use my... Uh, explosive shot and my coordinated assault i will use my kill shot off cooldown now i will refresh the dots otherwise i would not do that and i will use the bomb butchery use my kill shot off cooldown now i see a green bomb i'm gonna use it i see a blue bomb coming up now what i don't what i don't want to do is use my butchery yet i'm gonna blue bomb and instantly do three butcheries and now i can use flanking strike to get my uh, uh focus back up and I can use a little bit of my focus to dump them because I have a blue bomb or a red bomb, I mean. And a red bomb, this will mean that I can use kill command on different targets and get my focus back up quickly. Now, that is a little bit of the rotation, how it works on the different bombs and 
uh, how you can manage your focus and you can do that very quickly and deal a shit ton of damage and although a lot of guides say and if you look up on youtube that survival is very bad at the very this very moment i think in mythic plus they're not that bad so just give it a try and and hopefully uh it helps you out that was a weird ending but let's go to the next section about tier sets let's do that So now let's talk about our tier set. So for our two sets are Raptor Strike and Mongoose Bite, Carve and Butchery, damage increased by 15%. It's nice, but it is nothing special. Our damage just goes up just by a little bit. It's especially nothing in comparison to the Shadowlands tier set, but it is a very nice increase of damage. The four set, however, is really nice in my opinion. Uh, what happens is the following. Our Raptor Strike, Mongoose Bite, Carf and Butchery have a 20% chance to make your next, well, Mongoose Bite and Butchery cost no focus and deal 50% increased damage. This increased damage part is very nice because it's 50% so it will everything will hit like a fucking truck. But the no focus part is actually quite nice as well. Because on AoE, Butcher or Butchery already does a lot of damage, but on AoE, when it costs no focus, you will get your bombs back quicker. So, more free Butcheries means more free bombs, in a sense. On single target, it gets even better, because the more free Mongoose Bites you can do, the quicker you can get to 5 stacks in your Mongoose Fury window. And when you are at 5 stacks, if you then hit a... Mongoose Bite, which is empowered and deals 50% increased damage, then you will hit like a goddamn truck. So our four set will deal a lot more damage and it feels very nice, I think, when I finally get my four set to hit like a truck with your Mongoose Bite. So that is our tier set. So guys, thank you so much for watching it all the way to the end. And if you liked it, then by now leave a like and subscribe. If you want to support me even more, then you can by clicking something on YouTube and, you know, thank me some more. But that's not really necessary. I really am happy with the support that I'm getting. If you have feedback for me on how I should do different things differently or what I should keep on doing because it's uh, the, the right thing to do or what you like to see, then let me know in the comment sections below. That helps me out a lot. So I had a lot of fun making this guide and I will hope to see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.